Personalized home seller videos are coming to the market and is the election that still isn't over going to affect housing? We'll break it down next on Tool Time. So we are back on Tool Time in the middle of our team retreat. I'm Tom Tool, she's Sarah Timon. Super excited to talk about some wild stuff this week, crazy week in the country. We're gonna go local first, and uh, there was an article in the Inquirer this past week that talks about a home seller making a personalized pitch video to sell their home. So, Sarah, you watched it, we checked it out, we did some research, what do you think about all this? So, I mean, I think it's kind of uh, an interesting approach to try and put a personal touch to uh, the selling of your home. Uh, this particular video I did feel was a bit long um, and I, to be honest, had to kind of skip through it a couple different places. Um, and as we discussed, that home hasn't actually sold. So yep. uh, I don't know how successful that, that video was, but it is a nice way to kind of show, you know, this is more than just buying a home. There's, you know, you will you can have your life here, these events here, you know, it's, it's a way to kind of put a, a spin on it um, in a legal way for the, for the buyers to come in and do something like that. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into that in a moment, yeah. but like that's, that is not allowed. Um, but it's, you know, it's a way to try and have your house stick out a little bit more. So I, I love the concept. I, I agree with you totally. So just some facts here. The home's been on the market since June 21st. It is now, we're filming this a day early. It's November 4th. So that's a lot longer than the average time on the market. It's being sold by owner, so it hasn't helped the home sell yet. And this particular property, they, they bought it two years ago at 710, now it's listed at 895, so you guys can kind of look at that and see how it goes. I agree with you, that video was way too long. It was like 12 minutes, yeah. right? And we do a ton of videos and some informational stuff. It's gotta be quick hit. People have the attention span of a hamster right now. So I, I would agree that's my, my main comment on it. I also thought the quality was not that great. Right. Like, I mean, I know what my man Nick does behind the camera here. It's high definition, high resolution, wide angle lens. It looked like someone did that on an iPhone. And oh, yeah. the narration was great. I mean, it was, it, but I, I would love to see something actually like sold and worked versus yeah. something that didn't. Also, I mean, in this market, with it being such a seller's market, I don't know how necessary that is right now. You know, like if you're, doing the proper steps to position your home to be sold, I don't, I don't know that you need to do that. If you have it priced correctly, if you are marketing it properly, um, if you have a good listing agent, um, you know, different different things like that, I think will help your home stick out more than, than a video, but it was a, a neat idea. Yeah, and I, I, so I love the concept. I think, I think there's a way to execute it a little better, right? Sure. And look, th these people aren't agents. They're not marketing experts from what I can tell. The, the, so, you know, I, I, I don't have any issue with that, but it, certainly I would have loved to have seen something that actually worked versus like, sure. here's what's not working, which yeah. doesn't really help a lot of people. The, the bigger issue with this article, and I'm not going to say who it was, but um, there was agents in there talking about how like sellers have written letters about their home, what they liked about it. Totally all for that. Our sellers review our marketing stuff all the time to highlight some features that really worked for them. Mm -hmm. The concerning thing I saw in there, and we've talked about this a couple times internally, and there was that Long Island uh, under the microscope story about housing discrimination is agents are saying, hey, I love it when buyers write letters and tell sellers about themselves. And this is a fair housing issue. I don't know how many times or how long it's gonna take for people to get this, but when you tell people like, hey, I have this many kids, or I really need a one floor house because I have a disability, this is against fair housing laws. And the fact that agents are promoting that and don't know it, it concerns me. And this is like in the inquire. So And that particular article also, I believe, suggested putting a photo in, which putting we a know photo is in, an yeah. absolute no no. Well then um, you can see like what race they are, or mm -hmm. it, again, all about their family, how old they are. And these are ways people discriminate. And it's not about the seller can do whatever they want. Sure. We have a job as agents. So sellers are sometimes like they're like they book up people on Facebook, they do Google searches. Do right. whatever you're going to do. It's the agent to put it, minimizing any of those things happening. That's the Absolutely. biggest concern. And I mean, on the, the seller end, when they, they don't need to take down all of the photos in their home mm -hmm. of who they are. So like them presenting themselves is allowed. It's on the, the buy side that you can't go in and that's where you'd be violating the fair housing um, if you were to include the photos or write that letter that specifies these things that we can't we can't. Well and it, it's the it's the agent's job, right? Yes. Like this isn't the consumer. The consumer make what it can make whatever decision they want. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm right, saying right. they can they can do that. 
as an agent, we've got a job where we read through this yesterday at our, at our retreat because it's that big of an issue and we take it that seriously where it says, here are the following protected classes. And it's like age, religion, race. I'm not gonna go through all of them. You guys know what they are. We can Google it, whatever. And then it says, if any of these things factor into a real estate decision, it's a fair housing violation. So the fact that agents are out there saying this in the media, that's a problem. Yeah. And I, there could be a lot better training. And I'm looking at you, Suburban West, now Tri-County. I'm looking at you, GPAR, uh, Greater Philadelphia Area uh, Association of Realtors. I got the acronym wrong there. This is training that needs to happen because I see this all the time. We have on our offer instructions, don't send us letters. You know how many times you get letters with offers? All the time, because people aren't reading it. This is a big issue. People are in a lot of trouble in Long Island for what happened, and I think it's something that's got to really be addressed by the leadership at NAR, PAR, and then the local associations. Sure. So we'll end it there. <laughs> a little rough. Um, next topic, and this one's pretty interesting. So again, if something happens here between now and when you see this, because we're filming it a day early, what's going on with the election, right? This is the biggest question people have, and this is not political, but the question is, and we've gotten it, you've gotten it, I know all our team members in the other room have gotten it, what does it mean for the real estate market? So what do you think about all this? So people that are motivated to, to move and that need to move are going to be moving regardless of the election. Um, oftentimes what happens in an election year here for the month of November is you may see a slight decrease in activity, but that it picks right back up afterwards. So while there is this time of uncertainty and we don't know who will be elected and there's a lot of questions. Um, once the decision is made and things kind of move forward, people continue to move and transactions continue to move forward. And typically the year after an election, so year number one, is actually you're going to see a an increase in, in sales. So it, it pushes back slightly, but they continue to happen. Very well said. And you brought up a couple good points and I think we need to hit on them again. People are still going to move no matter who gets elected, period. Mm -hmm. If you've got three kids and you're in a two-bedroom house, you don't care who the president is. You need like a <laughs> place to put the kids' stuff. Um, and we've seen that throughout history. I mean, we talked about this during the pandemic when everything was shut down. Mm -hmm. People have never stopped transacting no matter what happened. I've been through 08. I've been through a number of elections. And it doesn't really matter who gets elected. It's about finding the folks that are motivated to make a real estate decision. There's a couple other things going on too. Inventory is not going to all of a sudden jump up because there's a new president. Like that's not going to happen um, unless you're one of those realtors that says, if you want to move out of the country, I can sell your house, which is like the worst <laughs> ad ever. So people stop doing that. But it's not going to increase inventory. So demand's still going to be there no matter who wins this election whenever it's over, whether it's this week, next week, next month, who knows? I mean, this is going to be a disaster from what it sounds like. Nick is shaking his head. He's so disgusted with how long this is going on. And I think people are fatigued by it. They want it to be over. Uh, that, that's a big thing. The second thing is rates aren't going to all of a sudden jump up either. 2.8% on a 30-year fixed. Yeah. Bananas, right? So people don't care who gets elected. They're thinking, hey, my payment's going to be a lot lower. And that's how people are buying properties right now. So despite all this drama, and that's what I view this as, it's a lot of drama. I mean, you, it's all you see on the news. And this guy said this, this guy said that. I mean, I'm done with it. I don't know about you. Um, I don't, those conditions aren't changing anytime soon. So it's going to take some monetary policy and Lastly, it takes forever to get anything done in Washington. I mean, it, it, it's gridlocked. They can't get anything done. So even if they have a policy that might change things, it's probably not going to get passed right away anyway. Right. And I mean, I think the important things to kind of look at here are, again, the people that have to move, need to move, want to move, are still going to move. Um, and the you brought up a great point with the interest rates and the election um, from everything that's out there and all the information that we have shows that the interest rates are not going to be affected by this. Um, they're going to stay in a in a low spot and give people a lot of opportunities. So I think transactions will continue to move forward. So we'll still be here selling real estate, I think is the answer. And there's going to be people moving. Good stuff, Sarah. Way to bring the, some, some, some good data there. So um, business highlights. So the day this is dropping, it's National Nacho Day. I didn't know this was a thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Valerie. So what are some great places to get nachos in your neck of the woods? I got a couple here and we're just going to shout out these businesses and a lot of them are delivering so you can pick them up tonight, this weekend. Great way to give back to the community. Sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm in Philly. Two of my favorite places are Sochi in Headhouse Square um, and Elvez. So both of them phenomenal places. Um, the, their nachos are good, but I also would have to recommend both of them have uh, where they do like table side guacamole and they mix it for you there on the spot. And that is delicious too. So not technically nachos, but 
wonderful. <laughs> Elvez is awesome. So I actually met Fred Barnett there. You probably don't even know who that is. I don't. <laughs> Eagles wide receiver from the 90s. We were going to a Billy Joel concert, and he was there before, and I think it was surprised anyone recognized him, but I'm a sports <laughs> freak. So um, Elvez is great. Love that place. Uh, we got a couple on the main line that we take our kids to a lot. We go to these places a lot. A couple of our clients actually just had dinner from there um, last week. So Buena Vista and El Limon. And they have locations all over. So El Limon's in Ardmore, Malvern, Bryn Mawr, Norristown, Westchester, Royersford, Paoli, and Conshohocken. So we've got, got you covered. Um, and Buena Vista is in Ardmore, Exton, Wayne, and Malvern. And both these places, I'm like you. Uh, nachos are good. I'm all about the guacamole. I, I think that's one of like the most, I don't, that wasn't like a thing when we were kids. Like guacamole, I feel like I avocados and this was, it's like a new thing. I mean, I don't, uh, did you ever have like guacamole when you were a kid? Not on the reg. Like, not that I can recall at all. I don't even, I didn't even know like what avocados were until I was like 18. Like, I don't know, maybe that's what I get for living in, uh, you know, a, a, a suburban household. But I'm much more a bigger fan of the guacamole, but the chips at these places are great. And, and the difference, what I'll say, is El Limon's a little more authentic. Mm -hmm. Buena Vista's kind of a little more upscale, and they're, they're both kind of like fast casual places, and they both deliver um, on like caviar and Uber Eats. Um, so, you know, if you like nachos and refried beans and all that stuff, that's great. I'm, on, I'm in team guacamole over here. So check these places out for National Nacho Day. And that's all we got. We'll catch all you right. next week. Thanks for watching, everybody.